Hey everybody and welcome back. Certainly glad you could join me today. In this video, we're going to start adding items to our game world and allowing the user to click on them to perform actions or whatever's relevant to that particular item. Obviously, thank you to everyone for subscribing and hitting the notification icon. And a huge thank you to all of my patrons. Your names will all be running across the bottom of the screen as we speak. <laughs> Okay, so before we do anything else code-wise, what we need to do is we actually need to create a sprite for the items in our game world. Now, I'm just going to do one just to show you the procedure, but you can do this basically as much as you want. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to allow our player to have themselves a cup of joe so what we need to do first is we need to zoom in and as you can see we've got a coffee grinder there it's not quite a coffee machine that's actually a food blender but <laughs> never mind they're going to make a cup of coffee in the uh, food blender here so what we need to do is in photoshop or whatever image editing software you are using use whatever tool you need to select the item that you need and I'm just going to quickly use the magic wand tool for this. Um, no, I'm not because that's blooming terrible. So we'll start again. I think I'll just use the quick select tool. All I need to do is select this bad boy here. And it hasn't got to be perfect. I mean, I will kind of want it to be perfect, but it's one of those things where it doesn't always work out as planned. Um, you can spend a little bit more time chopping these out if you want to in your own game. I'm just doing a really rough kind of selection there just to give us something to click on and then all we do is we hit the mask button and boom there is our amazing png file so we're going to go to file export and we're going to quickly export it as a png8 and then in our game folder we don't want to save it in places we want to come out of there we want to go into ui and what we're going to do is we're going to create a new folder and we're just going to call this items and then all we're going to do is we're going to call this uh, coffee machine.png and it makes good sense to put 01 or 00 after the name as well just in case you have more than one of each item so we've got coffee machine underscore 00.png and we're going to hit save and that's our icon now ready to go. So the next thing we need to do is jump in and code that. So I will see you in a second. So here we are in our code. We've got our class file open here and we're going to create a new class. So what we want to do is we want to create a class and we're going to call this, uh, I'm going to call it clicky because we're going to click on it and it's an object like that now when we initialize that we're going to need some va variables so first one is always self now the next one is going to have to be the location because we don't want to show it when you're in a random place um you know you need it to be the uh, in the correct room otherwise it's going to look really weird a coffee machine floating in the middle of the bathroom or something like that and the next thing you want to do is say is active because you want to be able to turn these on and off. It enables you to do kind of searches. Like if you wanted to have a game where certain items become unlocked when a player achieves certain things, then this is how you can do that by setting the is active flag. So say you went to the coffee machine and you realize that you didn't have any coffee beans, then you could activate the coffee beans item and so on until you had all of the ingredients you needed to make a good cup of joe and so you know the the options are limitless just being able to turn our objects on and off and the last thing uh, the last two things that we need is we obviously need an icon which is going to be the file that we just saved and we also want to say a function to call or a label to call so we're just going to put funk in there f-u-n-c and that's just going to allow us to define which label to call now we need to do self dot location equals location self dot is active equals is active self dot icon equals icon 
and obviously you're watching to make sure that none of these things change color when you're typing them so that they, you know that they're not reserved words and then self.funk equals funk you there's different ways you could do this you could always automate this by having say uh, a property the same as we had with our avatar file for our people um you could have sort of just the name of the object is the icon name and that sort of thing but i want to just make this nice and simple so we're going to define where it is is it active what does it look like and what does it do and that's it that's all we want so we're now going to create a object we're going to create a list but we're only going to populate it with one thing so we could say objects um that's not a keyword miraculously so it's going to say empty list and then we're going to say objects dot append clicky all caps like that and it's going to be in the kitchen making sure that we've got the capitals right in that because it needs to match the location name is active is going to be true the icon is going to be ui slash items slash uh, coffee and we're going to pull up our file to make sure that we've got it absolutely correct i'm doing this off screen so just bear with me for a moment yep there we go so we can actually we can just double click on that hold control c click off of it again and then we can just say control b coffee machine zero zero dot png there we go and then last but not least function to call we're going to call this coffee you're going to call the label coffee machine underscore zero zero and then that just means that we can keep a track fairly easily of which function corresponds to which icon and so on now before we do anything else obviously we need to create this function or we could add an if rempy dot has label um, function to this which we will do for safety anyway but we only need to create one label so we're just going to go control c and then in our class in our uh, scripts we're going to add a new folder and we're going to call this item labels like that and then in item labels we're going to create a new file and we're going to go coffee machine zero zero dot rpy marvelous and now we're going to say label coffee machine zero zero return and we're going to say that's a good cup of joe and there we go and we could even take money off of it you know make it like it's costing money to drink the coffee but I, i'm not that much of a sadist so that's all we need to do for that part like so now we need to actually display this on the screen so we're going to need to create a new screen and we're going to do that right now so in our screens folder we're going to add a new file and we're going to call this one clickies.rpy like that and we're going to find a new screen and we're going to call it clickies like that marvelous now then all we need to do is for q in and we have to remember what we called that list objects and i'm still a little bit sketchy about whether that's going to work or not because it's a little bit close to a, a keyword for me but never mind so if self dot location equals location and q dot is active spell that correctly it always helps marvelous so what we're going to do is we're going to add an image button and we're going to say idle equals q dot icon and hover equals q dot icon and what else do we need to set for this oh yeah we need to say focus underscore mask true otherwise the whole screen will be uh, clickable which we do not want and the last thing we want to do is we want to set the action for this button so the first thing we want to do is say set variable and we want to set click type 
and we need to go back to our other screens to check that we've actually got that right so click type that's what we need to do so we copy that variable control c like that put that in there so we're going to set that to clicky and then we're going to return and we want to return q dot funk like that so just so that everybody's on the same page. We've created a screen and it's gonna cycle through our list of objects of which there is currently only one. And we're gonna see if we're in the right location for that. Now we need to double equals that. And if that is true and the item is active, then we're gonna put an image button on the screen, which will set the click type variable to clicky and it will return the function. So all we're gonna do now is we're gonna check if the click type is clicky, then we're going to call the label for the item. And that's really all there is to it. So we need to go into our main game, uh, which is our game loop. Then we go into our script file and we're gonna say, if click type equals clicky, Now we're going to say call uh, UI return. Marvelous. Now what we need to do is we had to add that screen to our main UI. So we're going to come back to clickies and we're going to copy that. And in our main UI, what I want to do is have the characters on top of the items. So we're going to put it directly above the background image. So we're going to say use clickies like that. And now what we want to do, I'm just going to come back into our clicky screen and check. Uh, yep, these don't need to be equal signs at all. So we can just remove those. That's meant to say Q. And I think we've also got to change that to a small L in order to make this work. So if we run our code, hit start. There we go. So if we go to our map, we should be able to go to the kitchen. And if we click on that, could not find label UI return. So we've got that far. <laughs> right, what we need to do is we actually need to change this to call expression UI return like that. And then that's telling it that it's a string variable and not to actually try and call that label there. So if we come back into that now that we've done that and saved it, go to start. We jump to the kitchen and we click on that. That's a good cup of joe. You can change that to do various different other things. What you do inside those labels is entirely up to you. Really, you can advance time. You can take money off of it. You can trigger certain other events. It's really up to you. But that's essentially how you would put those icons in specific locations and have them do whatever you want them to do. Thanks very much for watching this episode. I hope you found it useful. Let me know what you think in the comments below and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.